are people feeling about the election of uh, Mr. Trump? Wow, um, I'm glad you asked that, Chris. Lately, all my consultations have been about passing the tissue box back and forth with my clients. There's a lot of panic out there. There's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, as you mentioned, there was very strong rhetoric against um, immigrants, immigration, and refugees. Uh, and a lot of people are concerned about what will happen to them, what will happen to their children. As uh, you know, we have many, um, hundreds of thousands of mixed immigration families where the parents are undocumented and the children were born here. Uh, and in many cases, the children are adults, or we have young adults who are brought here as infants and children, and they've known no other country other than the US. And for them to now face what we all consider to be great uncertainty is a very scary proposition. And uh, we have uh, a lot of panic in our communities. And I'm so glad to have this opportunity to clarify what we potentially think may um, be changed and what we think may remain the same so our communities you know calm a little and um, we have less panic given what you've seen since the uh, president elect started choosing his cabinet is there a cause for alarm i think we're we in the um, immigration community and immigration advocates are very alarmed as a matter of fact because um many of the present elects advisors have very strong anti-immigrant views. Um, we, many of them have been architects of anti-immigration laws on the state level. You must have heard of, the, of SB 1070, show me your papers in Arizona. Well, the architect of that law is now a very close advisor to the president. So that does give us you know, a huge sense of alarm. Um, and we are very concerned. So. What's the estimate of Kenyans who find themselves in the U.S. that don't have the right status? Well, that's a very difficult question to answer. There aren't any statistics or records kept anywhere we know who fell out of status. Um, but I know as of the 2010 census, and you know we do them every 10 years, so as of 2010 there were at least 96,000 Kenyans living here. And I know you had asked whether at least 30,000 in a previous conversation, whether at least 30,000 are at risk to be removed. I just feel that that's a little too high, considering 96,000 is not a very big community in comparison to other minority groups and other people from other around the world living here. Um, and I can honestly say that I don't have too many Kenyans who are uh, undocumented. As you state, many of them do come um, through ports of entry and are admitted. Many are students, many are visitors. There is some overstay, but perhaps two out of five or three out of five, maybe a little, little on the high side. I would probably say maybe one out of five, but or one out of ten. Uh, there's really no way to tell. If our African students come to um, many in the IT field, but also many in the healthcare. I see many of our Kenyans and many of our West African uh, students come and go into healthcare. But if only they knew how the program worked, it actually works for them. So you get 20 hours on campus for your pocket money, you finish a two year program, you get a whole year of work experience, you finish your, you know, another two years, another whole year of work, of, um, um, uh, work experience and in that time if you're working with the same employer the same employer could be filing papers for you when you're done with your four-year degree and your optional practical training you have your residency papers and your legal but if only there's a way for me to get to these students and i it really saddens me that when i do come in touch with you know people from our community they've already validated status many people at home have their folks living here in the u.s beginning january the new president will come in what do you think is likely to happen immediately to uh, immigration generally, but to Kenyans living here who don't have the correct status? So I, I think the best answer to the question is to ask our viewers to go on to our president-elect's campaign website and see the promises he made about rolling back immigration. Um, one of the first things he said on day one, he was going to ask uh, deferred action against childhood arrivals, better known as DACA, where um, young um, students who came in or young adults up to the age of 
you know, under 31, came into the country before June 15 of 2012 and continuously resided in this country. And they came when they were, you know, under 16 years of age. Those people, you know, in, in 2012 were beneficiaries of uh, this DACA program. Uh, these uh, young men and women got work permits and were able to go to college, were able to, to register with uh, universities and colleges and able to get jobs and are professionals right now. Um, that is the first program to go, to go. And that's very, very concerning because we're talking about tens of thousands of students uh, who, who went through the U.S. Um, educational system, who went through high school here, um, not necessarily college, but high school. Um, well, that is the first um, program to go because that is the creation of the uh, executive branch. Uh, it didn't need um, Congress to sign on on it. And the, as, just as President Obama you know, gave it, you know, President-elect Trump can take it away. Other things that would, may not be affected are things like temporary protected status, which of course is not Kenya related, but our neighbors in the North Somalia uh, are beneficiaries of that program. Um, that is a creation of statute by Congress, so that's going to be a little difficult to undo. But you did hear our president-elect say also, and also on his campaign website, that there's going to be extreme vetting of people who come from certain areas of the world. Well, I imagine this is probably going to be the same countries that had to register or part of the national um, security entry exit registration or uh, known as NCRs, and this would be the um, Middle East countries and North African countries. But um, also on the campaign website is nationals who come from countries that are not able to, to vet their citizens or are not able to properly vet uh, the visa applicants would, would not get visas. And I imagine Kenya might be affected. And the reason I say this is we recently had Westgate. You know, we have the ongoing security issue and the porous border with Somalia. Uh, we had the Garissa incident as well. We also had the, um, the U.S. Uh, attacks, sorry, the attacks on the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi and, <clears throat> and Dar es Salaam. So uh, I think that Kenya might, you know, un unwittingly be part of this extreme vetting. Is it advisable for those ones who live in far off places like, let's say, Alabama, uh, to move aw without papers, without the correct status, uh, to move away and um, relocate to this, some of these sanctuary cities? Is this something that you're going to advise? I would say, rather than just run from city to city, do please see um, a, a reputable immigration lawyer close to you, see what your options are. You'd be amazed to know the number of people that have come to my office and were so hopeless. But after a half an hour of a conversation and finding out more about them and their families and their background, and I've been able to resolve uh, many of these cases. Um, one which I say is the less glamorous is victims of crime, which I think is, um, and that's the U visa, which is also on the Republican chopping block. Um, where a person was a victim of a crime and has cooperated with law enforcement, has agreed to testify or has gone to court to testify where the perpetrator was caught, there is a visa for that. Even though there are only 5,000 visas a year and there's a long waiting time, but it's at least something to wait for. We, you hear our politicians talk about everybody, you know, you need to stand in line. So there is no line. There is no line. If there was a line, we would not have undocumented people. We wouldn't have Kenyans who are overstays and with no options. They would be standing in a line. Uh, but that line, which was, um, uh, and a lot of people refer to it as 245I under the immigration bill, which was passed by um, uh, President, um, former President Bill Clinton, where someone would find a sponsor uh, through employment or if or towards a family petition, pay a thousand dollars fine and get to stay. That was taken away. That was a line, but there is no line anymore. And I think it's uh, very disconcerting, but I think the smartest thing to do is for our, the people in our Kenyan community to go see an attorney and, and see what the options are. You go to clubs, Kenyans have known for fights, unnecessary fights. What's, what's your advice uh, uh, as a lawyer what are Kenyans who are living here without the status? 
what are the immediate steps that they need to take uh, uh, in the immediate uh, uh, aftermath of all this? That, that's a very good question. The triggers right now, without even having you know new policies come in, right now triggers are DUIs. I'm glad you mentioned club. With club, this drinking and with drinking, you you know get an Uber, please get an Uber if you're going to go to a club and drink. But DUIs are an enforcement priority even under the Obama administration. Even if you have a DUI from 20 years ago, and there was this widely publicized case of this person who had become a preacher, was um, you know, um, a man of faith, was leading a congregation up in Chicago, I think had four or five citizen children, he was removed. And no amount of petitions was able to keep him here. He's gonna, you know, he was removed and his paperwork has to be processed abroad. And the DUI conviction had happened I think in his case, maybe 15 or 20 years ago. So there's no such thing as an old um, DUI or misdemeanors like you know uh, assault and you know these uh, minor crimes that um, that come with you know with the impairment of uh, of judgment. I I would strongly advocate that if you do have any kind of um, uh, criminal background, again, see an attorney. There are some cases where we're able to reverse the, uh, the outcome of a criminal co an old criminal conviction where someone was not advised of their, um, of their rights uh, or the consequences of deportation where, and, and where these clients were represented, were convinced to take a plea because they would avoid jail. And a lot of people want to do that. They want to uh, you know, avoid jail, take a plea, but the plea you take is has immigration consequences. So if you have an old offense, an attorney can pull your records, look at the transcripts, see if you are properly warned about your um, your rights and the consequences of pleading guilty to a criminal offense. And we have this case that came out that the Supreme Court uh, issued a, a few years ago, which is uh, US versus Padilla versus US, where this person who was a Vietnam vet was driving this truck full of marijuana and um, his or Korean vet and his attorney said, oh, well, you've been here for I don't know, 30, 40 years. Nobody's going to remove you. Just plead guilty. Turns out, yes, it didn't matter how long you were here. Uh, pleading guilty in some cases d does remove you, you know, regardless of your service uh, uh, to, you know, to the U.S. military. Um, but there are also other options, if I may, if I may just say that. Um, and I think a lot of um, uh, we've, the, recently, we had Olympians will, winning gold medals for the U.S., but who were born in Kenya, and many of them had joined the military. So there was a program where if you join the military after you know, a period of, uh, after you finish boot camp in seven weeks, you're sworn in as a U.S. citizen. And that was uh, how a lot of, uh, uh, the U.S. won a lot of uh, medals recently. But please, if you do have an old criminal conviction, see an attorney, see if you, know, you were granted constitutional rights and due process. Uh, when you pleaded guilty, because that can be changed in some jurisdictions, and I would strongly encourage Kenyans: one, please don't drink and drive, and you know, no fighting, and uh, and try and fix your, um, your 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 criminal history if you have one. <laughs>